What's up, everyone? We are back. The Real Sports Science Podcast, episode 25. Matt, what we got on today? Today, we are talking about hot and cold recovery or hot versus cold recovery. We will delve deep in delve deep we will delve deep into both the methods of recovery and even look into which one's better do you have have you ever got an ice burn Matt? funny you should i say that though um <laughs> yes i have got ice burn once so uh as a kid um it was a football tournament and you know i injured myself so i thought my quad i got a bit of a dead leg i'm just gonna ice it you know and as I put ice on there, you put the cling film over. But my friends thought it would be funny to tell me that, you know, salt actually like helps bring more ice into it, it helps the sensation. So um, I said, OK, cool. Just put a little bit. My friend put salt on my leg and then the ice. And let's just say that bloody hurt. And that's why I wanted to become an S&C coach. Ever since that day, I wanted to just delve deep, delve deep into the science and find out what actually works because clearly salt and ice does not work it left a quite a bad mark as well but oh, geez. we live and we learn that is bad so folks out there tip of the week already we're a minute and a half into the podcast we already got tip of the week don't put ice and salt on your skin especially i mean you shouldn't be putting ice directly on your skin anyways mistake number one <laughs> Jeez. we live and we learn we live and we learn. This is the episode 25 of the Real Sports Science Podcast with Matt and David. Let's go. So, right now we're going to start off with a bit of a taste of the week. So, David, what are you going to be tasting for this week? I've got CNP whey protein here, chocolate. I keep I keep nice. going to this camera on my laptop and forgetting that my camera's actually over there. So I'm like, why is it getting closer to the camera? Oh. So right now, guys, we've got CMP. We're looking yeah, yeah, for. Yeah. To, we're, we're looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the kid who's concussed, who's talking backwards. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, wh- where's your finger? What am I following? <laughs> yeah, yeah. With my finger. <laughs> Yeah, no, see it, uh, CNP whey chocolate protein. This isn't the first time I've, I've tasted it, so it's a bit of a cheat, but because I've been enjoying it the last couple of weeks since I got it, but it's delicious. You know, I'll say one other thing is the creatine. I got the creatine because your boy trying to put on some white. Uh, you know how most creatines have like that grittiness that you just can't get rid of? Yeah, yeah, terrible not this one so if you're looking for non-gritty creatine yeah honestly honestly it's great yeah chocolate nice and smooth creatine not gritty get it get it in the mixer down it goes yeah it's really really good jeez there you go speaking of cnp winner announcement we're not going to announce it on the podcast you've got to go to our instagram so if you missed it too bad you missed it, but keep <laughs> keep coming back because hopefully we'll do another <clears throat> another giveaway. But we're we're releasing today who won our giveaway of the brand new product full pump from CMP as well. Can I give a hint to who it is? Come on, they liked the picture. They did everything they needed to do. They did everything. And they're right. a good. They're and part of the it. RSS family as well. <laughs> it was you that won. Not you, you. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, You're welcome. Funny. Let's so, get into the topic of today. Let's go. Right. Um, recovery. How do we start this, first of all? <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Such a big topic. Yeah. I don't yeah. think... This is definitely... Once again, I think I've said this about maybe 10 podcasts now out of the 25 we've done. And... I don't think this is going to be just a single podcast. We're going to have to do part two. We're going to do part three. We're going to bring some experts in this area because I just want to preface right here, right now. We don't know anything. So if there is some guy using (laughs) salt and ice, right, on his muscles and he turns out to be Usain Bolt, then look, I don't know everything. Maybe that is the correct way to do it. But for me, it didn't work. (laughs) Right. So that's just um, I just wanted to preface that before we dive deep into this. Oh, that's funny. 
That is funny. Yeah. Yeah. This is a tough one. It's everyone uses ice, right? And everyone wants to know whether ice baths work or whether, or whether like cold or whether cold, I just said that, or hot, does that work? If I get injured, if I injure my muscle or I want to recover faster, do I use cold? Do I use hot? Do I use a bit of both? Right. Yeah. And, and I think the research definitely says like points towards certain things, but there's always the caveat of like, well, it kind of depends, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, I don't know what you found when looking at the research, but what I found was that it was quite like there was no one paper that said this is what you need to do. And if there was a paper, sorry, if the, I did find a couple of papers that said, look, this is the most optimal method we found. I'd find a paper that would counter that one. So I, I just yeah. feel like at the end of the day, we can just say <clears throat> what what it was like, what we found. But at the end of the day, just try it yourself. So I'm not trying to say whatever we found or whatever our opinions are, you should go along with it. I'm just saying just try the methods that some of the methods that we talk about and find which one works best for you in that given yeah. scenario that you're in. Yeah, I think definitely like it's it's got to be a research backed whatever you do. Like you can't be like, oh, well, you know, there's there's other studies. I think re it definitely needs to be research backed or like research in form. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if a research study says this is what happens to like protein synthesis when you go into an ice bath directly after and then you're just like mm -hmm. no right like but but yeah i guess that's what just research is is reading it understanding it and then seeing how it fits in the context that you're working with but let, let's jump with, in with cold kind of the cold how is cold beneficial when is it optimal to use um yeah so what basically i think or what I found. So I, I just like to say that um, there's different types of ways you can uh, use cold right. in modes of right. recovery. So we'll go cold water immersion, <clears throat> um, cold water therapy, cold mm -hmm. ice pack, um, different types of ice packs out there, um, cryotherapy. Uh, do you have any more? Or no, I know. I I think that's and for the cry for anyone who doesn't know what cr cryotherapy is. Uh, that's basically when you go into a room that's really cold. So you don't act. So yeah, it's not in the water or in ice yeah. directly. It's just the room is wicked cold. Oh, oh there is one other one. Um, sprays. Uh, where where you where you spray really cold, compressed, usually carbon dioxide on your skin. Okay. And and that well, carbon I, dioxide is 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 really really cold, and it it's it's been shown that it can actually decrease your your skin temperature more than just ice oh interesting and not and not only your surface temperature but yeah. so like the actual yeah. bod core body temperature yeah let's 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 start here let's let's start here should i ice w ice when i get hurt well i'll tell you what i can do you want to take that question? Because I've got stuff about cold water immersion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Do the cold water immersion first, and then I'll go. I'll do the, and then we'll go to the ice after. Cold so, water immer immersion for what? So basically, for just post post resistant exercise. Um, so it has been demonstrated that post exercise cold water immersion ath helps athletes to accrue increased gym based volume load. Um, so basically, one of the, this study by Roberts et al. found that it managed to actually increase mean load lifted per set um, in subsequent sessions. Um, and it has also, by Schoenfield et al., looked at the mechanisms as why that is. And it said it has been shown to stimulate hypertrophy and neuromuscular strength performance in untrained subjects. And I'm not just, I want to highlight that last bit. In untrained mm. subjects, when looking at papers, I found very little on athletes mm. a lot of it was and maybe i didn't search hard enough but a lot of it was on untrained subjects or individuals who had been training for say one to two years um so maybe that yeah. could be that untrained subject is such that's a gray area so yeah that's so interesting that's the total opposite of what i've been reading really that that so so i guess basically it'd be helpful to say like when, when you go into cold water 
or ice pack or whatever cold therapy it decreases inflammation and that mm. that can be good or can be bad depending on on the, your circumstance because usually what's in inflammation is growth factors that's either healing the area that you've just hurt or growth factors that are well healing kind of the micro trauma traumas traumas that happen when you lift right and that's what like where doms comes from but you need those micro traumas also to like to increase muscle mass and for hypertrophy to happen yeah yeah long day so on on so everything that i've read actually is is if you're looking for hypertrophy if you get into a cold tub immediately after you train you're kind of suppressing that inflammation and the growth factors that that are now present in your muscles to to help you recover and help you build muscle and recover from those micro traumas does that make sense yeah yeah i feel like i said no, that based... in a round a roundabout way but no, then it's no, no. so interesting i'll tell you what no, listening to podcasts, I like it when you do that because when I listen to podcasts, I listen to what they're saying and then like maybe it doesn't enter my mind at some point and then I'm lost. Then I have to keep rewinding. But when you go roundabout way and you revisit lots of times, then at least they keep on clicking. Hopefully watch the people at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's totally interesting that you said that this one actually it increased. And I like the one thing you said is it increased like volume ability. I wonder if that's because um ice is shown to help with doms so if you're not mm. sore after a workout you'll probably be able to lift more the next day or whatever yeah um but, but even psychologically so maybe there could be like a placebo better, effect maybe. where because you've iced it mm. eliminates mm. a bit of the doms and you're like you know what i can do a lot more and then but mm. i think that's just with that study um it didn't the, the methods was a bit iffy right so i wonder if because they say untrained people so i wonder if like because they're untrained you know the first like eight to 12 weeks of training when you're when you're untrained most of the strength increases actually are from near neuromuscular improvements yeah. so your your muscles aren't actually getting bigger but your brain is able to contract your muscles better like your brain and your muscles just recognizing the movements yeah. just that familiarization so, phase isn't it yeah so i want like I wonder if it was it was the increases they saw were more from that and not actually like muscle or but how did they measure muscle hypertrophy? Did they do MRI scans? That's what, well, in order to I know this is pretty bad of me, but um, now, this, in order this to this threw me for an absolute loop. You saying this? So I, this is so interesting. Well, I found this and I tried to get the rest of the information, but I don't know. Do you have a spare like thirty four quid lying around? Um, <laughs> that was yeah, one of the yeah, issues yeah. so I, I kept I it in when... here just to because as I said like I just wanted to see how this uh, not opinion but how this take would be different from the other studies that we've read yeah well so, so after this podcast maybe we can do a quick video on this one and all when I'm at university tomorrow I'll pull up the paper and see if I can get the full thing yeah we can critique it that's there you yeah, because that's that's so interesting. Because I've always seen if basically I've gone if you're going for ice baths, and if if your goal is repeat performance, so say like you're in a football tournament where you have multiple football games per weekend, or a CrossFit competition where you have multiple like sessions per day and mm. over the weekend, then ice baths can really help because it'll decrease soreness like doms it can decrease the inflammation and decrease pain and that's that's i mean everything that i've read have it's kind of mm. leads towards that so if you if you need that like repeat performance and that's going to be high volume then ice baths can be great but if you're looking for hypertrophy and like training stimulus then ice baths aren't that great because they, they stop the adaptation process yeah, yeah, they suppress that inflammation that's actually there to grow your muscles. Mm. So again, oh, it depends yeah. on your context. Well, um, uh, but I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll say, definitely I'll look into one, that one. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. yeah. I'll say one more thing about ice baths, though. If you do ice baths, there's no need 
for you to be sitting in the Arctic Ocean with icebergs around you. You know what I mean? I've seen some people take ice baths and they're like breaking through the ice to get oh, in. That's, that's pretty cool though. Aesthetically, uh, there might that be looks some sick. psychological adaptations that happen there, but physiologically, for an ice bath to be to actually do what it's supposed to do, it needs to cool down your core temperature, and and for that to happen, you need to sit in the ice bath for ten to fifteen minutes. And you're not going to be sitting in an ice bath for ten to fifteen minutes if the water is literally like below yeah. zero degrees you know what i mean it's so um, i i read a study and it said like the, the if you want to do an ice bath you should be sitting in it for about 10 to 15 minutes and have the water temperature around 15 degrees 10 to 15 degrees so like cold but but not like ice you know what i mean no, 100%. Like, and I've got a perfect thing here that matches with what you were going to say. So there's nice. a podcast, Andrew Huberman podcast, episode 66, and he talks about the science and the use of cold exposure for health and performance. And I don't know if you've listened to any of his podcasts. Um, he's an amazing guy, incredibly intelligent. And literally, he put in one of his podcasts, and I quote, the key is to aim for a temperature that evokes the thought, this is really cold. And I want to get out, but I can also safely stay in. Right. So essentially, just you don't have to be so acute with your timings. Just a just a thought like that for the general public or for anyone really that doesn't have access cool. to a, a an ice tub where you can measurement the, measure the temperature. Do you know like? Yeah. yeah do you know yeah. what I mean? So like, yeah. I I guess I'd yeah. use that. And the cold. He also yeah. said, sorry to cut you off. He also said that the key. Another key is the colder the stimulus, the shorter of the amount you need to expose yourself to the cold. That one was a bit grey. I can't lie when he said that. Um, mm. But it's just the, the focus on that is first when one. When it's so cold, you can't actually. So because your skin, like your your surface of your skin, cools down obviously way faster because it's in contact. And yeah. one, if it's so cold, your skin's going to cool down so fast but you're going to be so uncomfortable. You're going to get out before your actual core body temperature decreases, which is what you need to have happen. And also you also do run the risk of injuring yourself. If it's that cold, if you have like ice, actual ice on your bare skin, that's yeah, you could, you could give yourself ice burns and be in Matt's position. <laughs> <You don't laughs> um, do yeah. Do, do not do that. Um, but then, in, in his podcast, sorry, it said, like, as you said, maybe psychologically, it can do things. Um, being in colder pod, uh, being in colder podcasts, nice. Um, being in colder, um, join up, maybe we should do an RSS podcast and an ice bath. Anyways, bit of a tangent. Um, that'd be hilarious. One of the studies that you mentioned, and I'll put the reference on here. Um, <laughs> nice. Sorry, I'm going to edit that in. I'll send it later. <laughs> One of the, one of the just look it <clears throat> um actually found that there was significant and prolonged increases in dopamine when people were in cool 60 degrees fahrenheit which is what in celsius david 60 degrees probably about 15 there you go in uh, water for about an hour up to their neck with their head above the water and dopamine is essentially a type <laughs> I like of how they, I like how they said they specified in an, in the bathroom Mate. for an hour but their heads above water <laughs> now nowadays hey nowadays you need to specify things hey because you'll get some bloke who's just under there like do you know what I mean? So you do have to specify. Mate, McDonald's got sued because their Honestly, coffee didn't have a caution hot. So, you know, Honestly, smart. Yeah. That person's smart. Um, there being was a PhD another one. student. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. There, there was another one. Um, a motorhome. So in the States, they're called like Winnebago's. Like the, the mobile homes, you know, that you drive. Yeah. And because they're mobile. The <laughs> Anyway. This one, this one, this one guy dr was driving this massive motorhome, and it said cruise control, and it didn't specify that that didn't mean. This is a true story that it didn't mean that that could drive itself. So he tossed on the cruise control, went back, made himself a coffee, obviously crashed, and he won. 
he wa- he sued the company of the Winnebago because it didn't specify that cruise control doesn't mean it drives itself. Honestly, honestly, um, bit of a tangent, everyone. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> But, mate, honestly, some, I mean, yeah, that's life, though, isn't it? Um, that's hilarious. But, yeah, so uh-huh. I'll put that stuff up, the, uh, the, the study here, um, and it, it increased dopamine. And dopamine is a type of tr- neurotransmitter that the body makes and your nervous system uses to send messages between nerve cells. Basically, the role of it is to allow you to feel pleasure, satisfaction, and motivation. So that, you know, it's a type of, uh, yeah. Like when you've achieved something and you feel good. So when I finally hit legs once every half moon, I feel good about it. Anyways, back That's right. on another tangent. That's right. oh, wait, tangent podcast, uh, join us. The same thing, the same thing that gets released in waves when you take cocaine, which is why you feel so good after it. But anyways. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, show and tell with David. Um, <laughs> and then another study describes significant... Um, Wait, you're having a. Wait, one sec. <laughs> the amount of cool. things I'm going to have to edit out from this podcast is hilarious. Oh, it's good. At least we know not to do night ones anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, we say that as it's 10:48 p.m. <laughs> mate, long. But uh, sorry, long back on it. Uh, another study describes significant increases in increases in epinephrine epinephrine being another word of adrenaline um from just 20 seconds in very cold water around 40 degrees fahrenheit um so adrenaline obviously everyone knows it as a a neurotransmitter as well and a hormone and it basically just makes fight or flight there you go that's right and that's That's why that's why when you top tip of the week again if you like fall into a lake any canadians listening if you fall into a lake like a frozen lake your number one thing that you have to do in the first two minutes is just keep your head above water because no, like those stimulants are going to be flooding your nervous system. And it's actually, you go into a reflex that makes it impossible for you not to breathe. So most people Jeez. who drown because they've fallen into cold water, unless obviously they can't physically get their head out of water because of ice or whatever, yeah. is because because they can't keep their head above water and they can't hold their breath. Because it's physically impossible. It's like for those first two minutes while you're in that kind of first shock phase, all you have to do is keep your head above water. Right. Because because of that, it's crazy. Now the lot, it is, it is yeah, no, it is quite crazy, quite scary as well. Um, but what was I going to say? The last thing I do want to say, and then we'll get off oh, yeah. this bit, yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> oh, waves of fact checking is going to come through, right? I love this. I, at least maybe RSS will get some more followers as well, but um, I'll risk it for the biscuit. Um, there is a part of brown fat, right? I'm going to stick on Google, right? It's called brown fat. And I think the yeah. largest amount of storage of brown fat is just above here, right? I heard this. I, I, I feel like I've heard this before as well, but right, I'm not right. going to say for sure. Yes. And apparently, Oh, God, my days, my degree's going out the window, I'm losing my job. But apparently, so there's a, a bit of like brown fat that's stored just above here. And if you shiver, if you don't shiver and try to stay there, adrenaline increases. But if you do choose to shiver, it's actually a good way <laughs> of burning brown fat. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> it's actually a good fat loss. Um... <laughs> mechanism That's hilarious so now we got people we got people under the water for an hour shiv- shiv- shivering to lose fat <laughs> you heard how do you first, suggest that exercise second. activates yes. your blood oh, no that's not it activates your blood <laughs> <clears throat> thermogenesis oh. sorry I just right. shouted a word with no sort of um <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> You learned that one today. Oh, uh, you know what? I on I have heard that before, though. I have heard that before. You know, David's backed me. Everyone, get on him as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You can hate both of us. Uh, that is. Should we should we summarize what we just said there? I think that would be a great last, idea. In the last twenty five minutes, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna come back to you on that paper that Matt brought out that said actually 
in untrained people, eye spasms, increased volume, and hypertrophy in the muscles. Because everything I've read, and I think everything that Matt's read as well, basically says that ice baths or ice in general for like muscle recovery is good if you're if you're wanting to increase performance either the same day or the day after because it's going to decrease doms decrease soreness and, and will just decrease pain so you, you'll be able to basically recover that short-term recovery quicker however what that's going to do is not get the training adaption. So I wouldn't use an ice bath after training if you want to get the adaptions from training after that <clears> session. <throat> Did I miss anything? No, no, you got you got it all. Nice. Got it all. It's nice. a weird and interesting contrary opinion, I believe. Yeah, um, so we'll I'm very interested to, to read that one. So then the question becomes, what about injuries? Because people ice all the time for injuries as well. For the same premise, decreased, well, inflammation and decreased pain, right? Like we've all iced and we all know that it works. Like inflammation goes down and pain, excuse me, pain goes down as well. Did you read anything about that or or, or, or should I just ta- start talking about what I think and what I've read? Start yeah. talking. I'm just reading my notes about um, <clears throat> the heat, <clears throat> heat stuff. I think. Oh, excuse me. I think again, you need to be, uh, you need to know why you're icing and when you're icing. Um, first of all, don't put ice on your bare skin, please. Put a towel on. It's not going to be as cold. It doesn't need to be freezing cold. Ice, if you're icing, 10, 15 minutes max on, on, on an ice pack that's not directly on your skin a couple times a day decrease inflammation you're gonna also relieve some pain <sighs> ice i think is good if you have had a traumatic injury that has a lot of inflammation that could because we said like inflammation is good right so then mm. it's like well why ice if inflammation is good why are we getting rid of inflammation right yeah it's it's... so i think in like that acute phase of like two like 24 hours 48 hours where actually too much inflammation is also not good because you can cause further tissue damage or yeah or if people are like if doctors or physios are trying to do tests on you and they can't because your mobility is so bad because your inflammation is so high then ice can be helpful also if you're in in thriving pain thriving pain throbbing pain right not bad i think the issue becomes is when it's like four days five days ten days and you're still icing i think then it's like we need to ease off the ice ease off like your advils Mm. do they have advil here in in the uk it's something i heard in the philippines i don't think they (laughs) did they must do so it's an NSAID, so a non a non steroid a non steroid anti inflammatory drug. Yeah. Advil is the brand though. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen is the actual is what Advil is. That's the word I was Yeah, but I, I was just trying to think about where I've heard that before. Yeah, I must yeah, have Advil's the brand and but it's ibuprofen is that yeah. drug actually. My brain couldn't think of that. Yeah, so pneumothorax. Sorry, carry on. It's got it down. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Would you, would you agree with that? Would what you've read agree with that? Can we pause? Did you? I don't know if I if you cut out. Then did you say like? Do you agree with that? Do you agree? Okay, okay. I, th- I thought it just may have cut out or, and I missed something. Or... <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so like what what I've read has also said that I think I'll get the temperatures up now as well. Um, obviously, ice. But like you don't want to keep it on multiple times. You don't want to keep it on too long as well. You don't want to have it on there at a constant temperature just sat there the whole time for, I'd say, well... <sighs> Everything I've read says 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say like you, around about 15 minutes with the little squiggly line. I mean, 
there's nothing that says you should hold it for 30 minutes it's just excessive um and you know we can talk we'll delve deeper into the actually applying heat as well um how can that differ in both methods you know so i I yeah. agree with what you're saying 15 minutes we're talking <clears throat> Maybe if you you're can in the do... if you're in the acute stage of injury, you have lots of inflammation, lots of pain. There's nothing wrong with icing it 10, 15 minutes, mm. you know, once in a while. I think when when it's when it's past the five days, ten days, then let's stop icing because mm. you don't want to decrease inflammation to such an extent that you actually inhibit recovery. I had a prof in my undergrad, <clears throat> and he something he said something that really stuck with me. He said we can't speed up the healing process. We can only slow it down. That's so our job, so our job as, cause our, our body knows how to heal itself. So our job is like, well, clinicians or physiotherapists or people who are injured is to get out of the way the best we can of our bodies to allow it to heal ourselves. I was just about to say, like, just putting it in the best environment possible for your body to do what it does best, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's I think actually some great people way. just, like, over, overdo things, over-ice it. Like, yeah, ice is great, and I think it does have its place for injuries, but, but you but don't want that to be... But at what point does it impede f- recovery? Yeah, and you don't want that to be the first thing you go to, you know? Oh, my, let's ice, you know? Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's figure out what the problem is, and then... Just take a step f- back. Yeah. Figure out a way to solve it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I'd say the next. Honestly, one... that was longer than I was expecting it to be. That that on um, cold. Yeah. Um. I don't know about you, but heat, heat. Let's jump into heat just briefly. I was going to say, should we just go cold, heat, and then in a part two, we talk about them together. Yeah. 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 Because. Because. Yeah. So yeah. We, what we what time are we thinking? Um, I'm saying end this fif- 50. What, in 20 minutes? How, what time did you say? 15? I said like 5, 10 minutes. We're already running at 32. Yeah. Okay, let's go. We'll just speak about heat and then cut it off. We'll say stick around for part two when we discuss the comparison of both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right. So I'll hit it. I, I can start. Yeah. Okay, and then diving into heat now, David. Um, So physiologically, hot water immersion increases peripheral muscular blood flow, as well as skin, muscle and core temperature, resulting in no effect, which has been found, which uh, no effect in no effect on improved performance in humans and increased hypertrophy as demonstrated in animal and human models. So there's no improvements on performance per se, but there are improvements mm. in hypertrophy, which is something we mentioned, which was a contrary opinion on that earlier um, right. study that we mentioned. And, so and, and 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 hypertrophy for anyone who doesn't know is is increase muscle mass basically. Yeah, and in a num- in a doctoral thesis work, McGorm 2019 reported that the application of post exercise hot water immersion. 15 minutes at 45 degrees Celsius, attenuated increases in lower body muscle mass, uh, recreationally active subjects, following a 10 week muscular muscle hypertrophy and strength program compared to a control um, group. It remains wonder, unclear though. That... I'd like. Sorry, yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna... um, sweet, we're back. We haven't learned. Woo! <laughs> there's the energy let's go <laughs> we're the worst of that you finish talking <laughs> sorry okay so um i just wanted to say end it off with a little note after i read this study um or this thesis it remained unclear if the strategy would actually stimulate muscular ad- adaptation following this um mm. it there were neuromuscular performance responses but no actual increase in performance per se hmm so it did help with hypertrophies, right? Yeah, yeah. What well, I'm trying to yeah. get at, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want. I wonder if that's <clears throat> so. Again, like long term adaption. We saw a cold could be good for like that direct, immediate performance mm. improvement if you're like need need repeat performances in the same day or or over a weekend. And heat seems to do kind of the opposite. Like it doesn't have that direct performance improvement, but but long term it might help 
I wonder if that's I wonder if it's like because of increased blood flow increasing yeah. the the yeah. one of the sorry one of the mechanisms mm -hmm. that was uh, described in that study that I just read out was that they actually increased peripheral muscular blood flow right yeah and so that's going to increase oxygenation it's also going to increase anything that's in your endocrine system that goes through your blood yeah. getting to those muscles as well also increase recovery because of everything you know everything that tra most things travel in our bloodstream yeah, to so the tissues that they need to go to so increasing that blood flow to the tissues is only going to help it for several reasons yeah like as you said like blood, blood vessels um begin to dilate to that specific area where you've applied the mm -hmm. heat pack or whatever and yeah improve circulation and blood flow um yeah. so yeah it's quite interesting so we could say that literally it depends on what adaptation you're trying to focus or what what your goal is or the scenario you're in if you're injured you wouldn't if you're injured you wouldn't want to put a heat pack on um to a certain extent mm. say you've just got a massive dead leg it's killing you stick a heat pack on that it's it could just get even worse it could um as you said in, in, enhance the tissue damage especially especially acutely I think yeah. I think there is some evidence that that talks about heat in muscle damage, but long term to improve the muscle flow to that to the the site of the muscle strain or muscle tear, but again not immediately. Like the last thing you want to do when something's inflamed is make it hot and just increase the blood flow to that area. <laughs> yeah, because that and is just going to in, increase inflammation, isn't it? Yeah, and and another thing to say is, we're talking about. I think the best way to do this. Obviously, it sounds silly, but I will state it anyways. Um, when you're heating, think of the apply at uh, the specific area you want to focus on. Instead of, you know, just I, there was a data set that showed that local but not indirect heating increases calf skeletal muscle blood flow in humans. So just mm. apply it to that specific point that you want to heat up. Don't just Say, uh, unless you've done a whole body session or an intense gym session, get in that sauna, heat yourself up, and we'll talk in another podcast uh, what are the benefits of sauna and steam room. Um, yeah, yeah, but for now, that's like, that's we'll like just... full body, kind of like water immersion. Right? Yeah, if you're yeah, looking for, and that, that would be long term, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, and, that's, but and short there's so term. many health benefits of that, but we don't have time to go into all that. <laughs> and I would definitely need another podcast for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting, but again, it it goes back to just knowing your context, doesn't it? Like some people I mean, see something or read read like, oh, ice helps with this, and then they just like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm going to use that in all these other contexts where it's like, no, that was mm -hmm. for like elite athletes who are injured to like I don't know help doctors perform like on pitch assessment to so like the ice was used to decrease the inflammation so they can actually move the limb or whatever yeah you know no it's just it, it is it is quite um someone's got jack burbank's burbank's cough eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's passed on um no, it's, yeah <laughs> it's just uh no it's quite interesting and i think once again sticking onto the theme of this podcast every time we've spoken to someone the common theme of everything in life is context you know yeah. whether you're getting a job or you're trying to put a bloody ice pack on context think about mm. what you're doing don't just read the headline of one study you've got to dive deep into it if there's a contrary opinion do give it some thought and read it and if you find out obviously it's difficult to find read through every paper i mean you know we've probably said some wrong things i mean i was talking about bloody fat lo uh, brown fat loss <laughs> earlier but um yeah just to have it on the back of your neck yeah just <laughs> just the one spot i can't wait to have abs on the back of my neck eh? um <laughs> but yeah just literally just think about the context that you're in apply feel it out don't go too heavy in one direction you know don't go too heavy oh i'm icing this for an hour now i saw one study that said that but it's bloody hurting my leg just common sense it as well you know yeah am i supposed to be feeling this much pain is my skin meant to be this red you know <laughs> am i supposed to really hold my breath underwater for an hour <laughs> yeah for an hour even though I'm freezing and I probably can't even hold my breath for an hour. <laughs> Just a, someone's got a scuba suit. They're in their bathtub and it's freezing cold with ice. And <laughs> Just a snorkel. Pumps yeah, out yeah. just 10 times bigger and ready for their next day of sport. 
unbelievable. Uh, that's but funny. yeah, I'd, I'd like to say just, um, so this is especially, I think we both can agree, this is a part one, where part two, we will mm. dive deep into the comparisons, um, mm. whether which one works better, or is there a method you can actually put a bit of both in? Um, yeah. So, Definitely. yeah, I think we'll go into that. And I'd like to, yeah. I got nothing. That was that was a great summary. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Just, if if you're again, if you're enjoying the podcast, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You know, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Just mate, have some caffeine or something. Just a bit more energy when saying follow us. And <laughs> mate, the chillness. You were like me last episode. You're like, just follow us. Give us a like. I hope you listen. That was a great summary. <laughs> It's hard, isn't it? When you're in one of those... Mate, especially after yeah, you yeah, doing yeah. that CrossFit, I bet you're shattered. Oh, I'll tell you what, that was difficult. It was so hard, but it was good. It was good. Pretty happy. With Our myself. tangents but today yeah. are elite, by the Not way. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mate, this, this is, is why we need an expert know? on. <laughs> <laughs> mate, that was a perfect yeah. summary. You know what, David, you're no, right. We... Just cold. <laughs> Just switch it up. <laughs> Feel it out yourself, bro. Feel it out. It's not like we've done 40 minutes and you don't know what to do. Just feel it out. Figure it out yourself, pal. Why are you listening to us? <laughs> That's what we just told them. I've just realised. <laughs> Our summary was basically <laughs> read a paper, but if you don't agree with it, just feel it out. Yeah. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm amazed. That was... That is the worst thing I've ever heard. That is to cut that hilarious. summary hilarious. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you're not sure what to do, too bad. <laughs> yeah, too, listen to someone else. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> okay, should we try the summary again? <laughs> no, you hit the summary perfect. I don't need to do the summary. I just need to tell people to follow us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Hey, if you like it, give it a share. Yeah, give it a share. We would love that. We appreciate that. Spread the word of the podcast. Um, if you're looking for protein, 15% off at CNP with the code REALSPORT15. So get over there as well. I'm loving it. I think Matt's loving it. We can't wait to just keep going with those guys as well. So Matt, anything else? or? Yeah, I'd just like to say out. at the end of this podcast, at the end of this podcast, we'll put a direct link. Go on our website where we'll put with the episode the papers that we've referenced. Maybe they'll be in the podcast as well. We'll just get them referenced for you to see. And if yeah. you have any suggestions after listening to this, just drop us a message with some of the papers that you found or the views that you've mm. heard um, or seen and let us know. Because I definitely think part two is where we'll round it up and summarize everything so much better. Um, so this, I guess, could be a little teaser for everyone at home. Because part two, we Hopefully. come back with the comparison or maybe both at the same time, or we just do a perfect little summary, well, not all, and we'll do a perfect little summary at the end to let you guys know which is the optimal way, in our own opinion, from what we've read in the research. No. This has been the RSS podcast. We're out.